Hello guys, this is Sean from Korea and for this week's quantum video, we'll talk about three topics. So how does SVP affect Hyun Q? And the second one is Hyun Q and Korean government relationship. And then the last one is room temperature superconductor. <clears throat> okay, to start off, does SVP shutdown affect Hyun Q at all? So a lot of Hyun Q investors in Korea was wondering about this. So I decided to ask this question to the head of IR, Jordan Shapiro, myself, and I got this answer from him. So the situation with SVB continues to evolve with this government most recently assuring that all SVB depositors will have access to their funds in full. So it doesn't matter whether the IONQ has some kind of uh, deposit in the bank because the government will assure they receive all the money. But even prior to this announcement, uh, they considered uh, their exposure to any liquidity concern as SVB as immaterial because all of their investments are held at other banks. So we got confirmation on that. So their financial positions and cash position continue to be strong, which I will show in a minute. And the current situation does not present a risk to their operations or roadmap achievement at all. So that's a uh, good news for us because many of us was nervous about it. And one hint that he gave to me, I think, is that he looked forward to report again on their performance and outlook of their Q4 and full year 2022. I'm wondering why he mentioned this. So last time we talked about that IonQ irregularly already reported their bookings ahead of the earnings. So I had three scenarios, which first one is the best, second one normal, and last one is the worst. But since he mentioned about the earnings call, uh, maybe in a good way. So I'm thinking there's something uh, good news coming on the earnings call, but that's just my personal thoughts so don't put too much meaning on it and he also said that the u.s government is backing all svb deposits so practically no svb customers are exposed to risk at this time all right so when we look at the ionq's uh cash and cash equivalents and their investment positions we see that their cash and money market funds are very small this is in thousands and then they have commercial paper corporate notes and bonds municipal bonds and u.s government agency and we can see that uh their short-term positions one year or less more than half of, of what they owe so they can uh, quickly move the money out of those deposits when they need to do so in the long term assets is like one third of the short term asset so they have in total about 556 million dollars worth of cash and cash equivalents and investment assets so i'll say that as a small startup this is pretty rich so they have strong financial positions so they can spend this money to uh, generate revenue so by looking at their balance sheet we can see that their total debt to equity is less than one percent so most of their assets are their equity and only a small portion which is less than one percent is liability so we don't need to worry about their current cash situations what we really need to worry about is how long will it take for ionq to be profitable would they be out of cash until then we'll have to see and the next one is from uh, korean embassy at dc um twitter so here's jung sin kim who is a co-founder and the cto of ionq and here are some ambassadors from Korea. The ambassador Cho visited IonQ where Jung Sang Kim, CTO, presented about quantum computing technology. So they discussed about the future possibilities of quantum technology and to promote US and Korea cooperation. So one of the things that Desmond mentioned on our interview was that Korean uh, government might be one of the potential customers to actually buy the quantum computer from the IonQ for on-premise purposes. So this might be a hint, but I think a little bit differently because Korea has a national strategy of developing superconducting QC and their goal is to have 1000 qubits uh, around 2030. And on 2030, they want to develop 500 qubits superconducting uh, QC. So since Eon Trap is very different from the superconducting method, so I think there might be a chance, but this possibility is pretty low that Korean government might purchase a quantum computer from IonQ. So I'm thinking more like Goldman Sachs or Fidelity or other uh, private global uh, corporations might be the first quantum computing buying entity or the US government agency from IonQ. And the last one was that there was a big news about room temperature superconductor. So so the news told us that the condensed matter physicist Ranga Diaz and his colleagues from University of Rochester in New York reported on Tuesday, uh, last Tuesday, the di discovery of a room temperature near ambient pressure superconductor. So many people, many Korean investors asked me about what I think about this. So I did some
some research have found something amazing. So such a breakthrough is a very meaningful because it's a significant step toward a future where room temperature superconductors transform the power grid, computer processors, and diagnostic tools in medicine. So it's a big discovery, but one thing that catches my mind is that DS is being accused of committing scientific misconduct, including data manipulation and plagiarism. So he uh, posted his reports on papers on nature on 2020. But here we could see that but for the past three years, the Chester team has been in allegations of scientific misconduct. And I think last year, nature has uh, retracted the result of DS's paper. So he already committed a crime first. And then he came out again and told us that he discovered the room temperature superconductor after three years again. But from the Korean news, I saw that he uh, refused to give the samples to other peer science scientists because it might intrude their um, intellectual properties. So further misconduct allegations were there. So DS plagiarized substantial portions of someone else's doctoral thesis when writing a paper in physical review letters and overwhelming majority of agree that some form of misconduct has been occurred and DS himself denies the accusations. What's interesting is that he's not even a, a professor with tenure. So he's assistant professor and I'm not sure what he wants to do, but I, I think he just wants to get attention and get some money out of it. So that's what I think from the news and what he did before. So my thought is summarized by what Jordan told us. So IONQ's financial stature and cash position continues to be strong. And the current situation does not present a risk to their operations or roadmap achievement. And then IONQ's first QC sales customer might be Korean government. But my personal guess is that this possibility is low since Korea is developing its own superconducting quantum computer. So it might be Goldman Sachs, Fidelity, or US government agency. I think this, is, this has more possibility. And the room temperature superconductor? I don't think so. So today we talked about three topics and we could find the answer of our questions if we just do a little bit more of research and more Google. I hope you guys really do that when you are investing to other companies as well. So thank you for watching my video. Please subscribe, leave a like and opinions, and I'll talk to you guys later next week. Thank you.